Get ready for five tips if the cops come knocking. And if you wait around till the end of this video, I'll also provide you a strategy to obtain total privacy from the police. And if the cops refuse to leave your front porch, what you can do to make sure and protect your rights from a search. Let's start with the basic question. Can a cop walk up through your driveway, up to your front door, knock on the door and demand to talk to you? Now look, if you provide an access way to the public, let's say an entryway, an open gate, a driveway, a walkway for the general public to approach your front door, courts have long held that you provide a license to the police to be able to walk up to your door and knock in the hopes that you'll answer it. I have spoken on previous videos about the dangerous nature of knock and talks, as they're called by the police, where they will come up to your front door, try to bait you into a conversation in the hopes that they can then take innocent conversations and now it can turn into a dangerous situation where cops will claim you consented for them to enter into your home. Please understand what a knock and talk is. In fact, I'm gonna read you the definition that a judge gave about a knock and talk. He said, this is basically a police technique to gain access to a home without a search warrant by persuading the homeowner to consent to entry and search. In fact, some judges don't even refer to this as a knock and talk. They refer to it as a knock and enter because that's exactly the goal of a police officer when they come to your front door. Now, to have a true appreciation of how good cops are at this, I wanted to give you some information that I found about certain police departments that use this technique. In fact, you can look at the Dallas Police Department. You can find the Orange County Sheriff's Office in Florida. They have over 300 officers with an entire division that instead of just going and getting a warrant like they could do, they commit themselves to knock and talks. Essentially, here's what a fellow officer of that division said. The strategy, cops admit, they go for broke by looking to intimidate the homeowner enough to let them in but not pose such a threat as to make the homeowner clam up. Now think about that. They go for broke by trying to terrorize a homeowner to get them to agree to allow them to come in, but use persuasion enough just to not make them feel too vulnerable. Now look, are cops just being lazy by coming and doing knock and talks rather than just going and getting a warrant? Not exactly. There's a little bit more to it than that. One of the things that cops know that they like to do because it makes it easier for them to get it into evidence is to be able to obtain evidence through consent. So they know that if they can get out there, knock on your door, convince you to allow them to come into your house and search, now all of a sudden consent cures all under the law. So understand that's the goal here is to obtain your consent. In fact, one legal scholar said it this way about knock and talks. He said, consent searches are the black hole into which the Fourth Amendment rights are swallowed up and completely disappear. Cops are really good at making people feel bad about exercising their constitutional rights. In fact, most officers know that most people don't even really know their rights. So if they can get just a little bit of consent from you, then they know most homeowners are not going to realize that they can not only withdraw consent, but stop the search altogether. In fact, sometimes cops will admit that it's easier to convince a homeowner to agree to a knock and talk than it is to convince a judge to sign off on a search warrant. In fact, in documented studies, I'm going to read this to you, in Michigan, Arkansas, and Missouri, a full 80 plus percent of knock and talks result in homeowners giving some consent to cops to search their home. One detective admitted, this is what he said, he said residents consent to search on knock and talks is like shooting fish in a barrel. But here's the next big question. How far can cops really take this? What if they come to your front door, they knock, and then they keep knocking and they refuse to leave? What should you do? First of all, you have no obligation to open the door at all. What I suggest you do is you look through your peephole or you look through your camera that you have, maybe your electronic camera, and if you see a police officer out there knocking on your door, do not open the door. What if cops are standing at your front door and they've got guns drawn and now they're demanding you step outside? Can you still ignore them? Yes, you can. The Ninth Circuit case of the United States versus Martin reminded us that our home is still our castle. And unless the police have a warrant or exigent circumstances, they can demand all they want and you can still completely ignore them. Can cops lie to you if you do answer the door during a knock and talk? 
If you need another reason to not open the door in a knock and talk, here's one for you because cops absolutely not only can lie to you, they very often will lie to you during a knock and talk. Here's the part that's very unfair. No one said life is fair, but courts have ruled that cops can use deception when they're involved in criminal investigations. And in fact, they're allowed to use them during knock and talks. So don't answer the door. Don't put yourself in a place where you have to answer questions from a cop who is likely going to lie to you. But what if cops come to your front door, you open, you talk to them, and now they lie to you about the reason why they need to get inside your home? Is this legal? For example, there have been cases where drug investigators actually came to somebody's house, they knocked on the door and claimed that there had been a bomb threat and they needed everybody to clear out in order to make sure and search the place for a bomb. But in reality, they only made that up in order to get everybody out of the house so that they could go in and look for drugs. I know, it sounds like a joke, right? In that situation, the court suppressed the evidence from the police because the primary reason to enter the home was based upon a lie. So here's the key. Cops can lie about surrounding facts and other things, but they cannot lie about the primary reason they're trying to enter into your home during a knock and talk. But what if you do answer the front door and then you realize you made a mistake and you demand the cops to leave? Do they have to leave? Yes, they do. Look, just like we have a right to tell a FedEx driver or somebody else that comes up on our private property that they need to leave our property, the police don't have any more authority to come and just hang out on our private property than anyone else does. If you tell that officer that he must leave and he does not have a valid warrant or he doesn't have exigent circumstances, which basically means some type of an emergency situation for which he can justify in court why he must remain there on your property, then he must absolutely leave your property. In fact, in the 2021 appellate case of French versus Merrill, cops were actually held civilly liable for failing to leave during a knock and talk. And I wanna go over this with you. The court specifically said that the cops are expected to knock on the door, wait a short time, and if there is no answer, they should leave the premises, just like dealing with anyone else. Now, the facts of that case, in French, the cops actually showed up, they knocked on the front door, he didn't answer, so they left. But they didn't just completely clear out, they came back and then they began to snoop around the house. They got out their flashlights, they started looking in windows. In fact, they actually saw the man inside the house. He looked back, but he did not actually go and answer the front door. So then they began to actually come back to the front door and now they kept banging on the door, refusing to leave. Understand what this case established. It established that they would be held civilly liable for violating his constitutional rights. Why were the cops held civilly liable? Well, it only makes sense if you think about it. Look, if the cops can establish probable cause, why don't they just go get a warrant from a judge, come back and execute on that warrant? But here, that's not what they did. They came and they continued to harass him, refusing to leave the premises. And here's the big thing that this court actually established as well. They stated that there was, quote, no qualified immunity for the police officers for their actions resulting in this situation. So what does that mean? That means French actually got paid for the violation of his constitutional rights. Now, can you make a citizen's arrest for a cop who refuses to leave your property? I've had several other people ask me this question in my comments on some of my other videos. And I would not advise that you do this unless you want to be arrested and taken to jail. In fact, if you try to arrest a cop, get ready for that officer to get violent with you and his supporting officers, his backup, they're going to support him and they're going to get violent with you too. Now look, I know people ask me, well, Jeff, come on, man. What does it say in the penal code? What does it say in the code of criminal procedure? Is there not, is there an actual provision that says that you can't do this? No, it doesn't. It's not gonna say you can't defend yourself and in certain situations of deadly force, there are times when you can defend yourself from an officer, but making a citizen's arrest on a cop is a totally different thing. Because here's what courts have done. Even though many of the statutes don't provide for this, what courts have done is create a public policy to not allow a citizen's arrest on a police officer. So what do you do? You do exactly what happened in French versus Merrill and you hire yourself a civil lawyer who will take it to court and hold any officer that violates your constitutional rights, hold them liable for what they have done with a civil damage amount.
But what if cops are persistent about trying to get into your house and now they come back with a drug dog and they start running that drug dog around your house? Can they do this? That's exactly what happened in the case of Florida versus Jardines. In that situation, the police had received some type of tip that Jardines had marijuana inside of his house, but the police didn't have enough evidence to establish probable cause to get a search warrant. So what did they do? They pulled out the trusty knock and talk technique, except this time they decided to add a little flavor to it by bringing a drug dog with them and start running that drug dog around the perimeter of the house. As the cops and the drug dog approached, they claimed that the drug dog, quote, alerted on one of the drugs it had been trained to detect. So as a result of that, they began to run the drug dog around the entire house. Now, I recently covered a video where I talked about drug dogs and the fact that many times their detection rate can be as low as 20% in drug investigations because police officers have a tendency to lead drug dogs to alert in areas they already believe there is drugs. Well, in this situation, in Florida versus Jardines, the cops show up, they direct the dog right to the front door, and they claimed that it alerted on the presence of drugs right on the threshold of the door. The cops then used this drug dog alert as a basis to obtain a search warrant where they came back to Jardine's home, searched, and arrested him for drugs. Now, Jardine's lawyer filed a motion to suppress any of the evidence because they argued that by allowing the police to show up and do an actual search with the drug dog on the protected curtilage on the immediate outside area of the home, that it violated his Fourth Amendment rights and that all the evidence should be thrown out. Remember, this is critical. Cops can't just show up on your front porch and start digging through things or searching through whatever they want. They must either have a valid search warrant, they must have your consent, or some type of exigent circumstances, some type of emergency situation, like somebody's out there flushing drugs down a toilet, or maybe someone is being injured or hurt inside the home, and they must be able to articulate that in court in order for them to be able to force some type of search or to gain entry into your home. You have just as much Fourth Amendment protection for the area on the immediate outside of your home, known as curtilage, as you do the inside of your home as well. Now, I'm gonna cover with you that secret we talked about, that strategy about making yourself completely private from the police. I told you earlier that the law provides that the police can have a license to gain access to your front door to perform that knock and talk, but that is only true if you provide that same access to the general public. What if you provide no access to the general public to your front door or your back door and you use privacy fences and you have that front gate locked and you put a no trespassing sign at the front of your property line. In that situation, it's a little bit different. In that situation, if the cop tries to climb over your 10 foot privacy fence or force his way through that gate that you have marked off and you've listed it as no trespassing, now the officers will be violating your Fourth Amendment rights if they even tried to get to your front door. My point, even though the Supreme Court has said that the cops can walk up to your front door and knock on it through a knock and talk, if you provide access, all the area immediately surrounding your home, like your front porch, your barbecue grill, your sitting area, that is what is known as curtilage. And you have the same Fourth Amendment rights for that area as you do inside your home. So the police cannot violate those rights. So what are the top five tips we've learned to protect yourself from a knock and talk when the cops come knocking? Number one, if you want total privacy, create a wall of privacy around your house using a combination of both privacy fences, locked gates, as well as no trespassing signs. Courts will rule that you've created an expectation of privacy and cops can't get to your front door at all. Number two, if you do provide general access to the public to your home, then now the cops can, through the license theory we talked about earlier, they can approach your front door and they can knock and hope that you're willing to open the door and talk. However, you have no responsibility or requirement to answer that door unless the officers have a valid warrant. So, what reason would there ever be for you to want to answer the door if the police come knocking? Number three, cops can knock, but they can't camp out. If you refuse to answer your front door, they cannot continue to camp out waiting on your private property for you to answer the door or for you to leave your house. 
Their license is limited to the same type of approach we would extend to the Girl Scouts or a FedEx driver or anyone else. Once the homeowner makes it clear that they don't want to answer the door, which you can do by ignoring them, now they must leave the premises. License expired. Number four, cops can knock, but they cannot search. Remember, if you refuse to answer your front door, the cops cannot just begin to go through the curtilage, that area just immediately extending your house from like your porch and all those areas in your backyard. They cannot just begin to dig through there and search and find whatever they want. Those areas are just as protected under the Fourth Amendment as the inside of your home. Finally, number five, if the police violate your rights during a knock and talk, remember, you can fight this in civil court and the cops do not have qualified immunity. Now, what if cops come to your front door or they pull you over and they demand to see your guns? Can they force you out of your car or maybe even out of your house in order to figure out what guns you have? Check out this next video where I walk you through the exact steps and tips you need to know if the cops come knocking demanding your guns. See you over there.